<laughs> I'm Mac Chista, this is Jetavision, and today we're reviewing Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Side note, does anyone think that name could use a little streamlining? Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I don't know, man. And I suppose, just as a heads up, we're not big Planet of the Apes fans. We're not well versed in the world building and the lore. Just saying that for transparency. Although the movie does take place many generations after Caesar's death, so we presume it's a bit of a new start for the franchise. So it was actually pretty easy for newcomers such as ourselves to get into. So the background here is that some scientists messed around and released this pathogen that gradually made humans dumb to the point of non sentience, while the apes grew smarter, forming numerous ape tribes. The main character is a chimpanzee named Noah, who belongs to a tribe with a tradition of taming falcons for hunting purposes. All is well until the entire clan gets abducted by these gorilla dudes, Noah being the only one to get away from the chaos, so he sets out on a mission to rescue his tribe. On his way there, he's joined by this orangutan, Raka, who's a part of this scholarly movement to retain Caesar's teachings. They also come across this girl named May, who is apparently immune to this virus that turns everyone into inbred cavemen. After losing Raka at a scuffle at the bridge, Noah and May are captured captured by the same gorillas who abducted the tribe, and are taken to this weird monkey civilization built around this giant ruined ass boat, where Noah's tribe, among many others, are enslaved and forced to work for this bonobo, who calls himself Proximus Caesar. He misinterprets Caesar's teachings to turn himself into a dictator, and enslaves all these tribes to get him to work for him. You ever play New Vegas? Because this guy is basically, literally, Caesar's Legion. He's trying to get inside this vault so he can get access to all this human technology and May's all like, we gotta stop him. We can't let him have all that power. So Noah gathers up some of his dudes and they try to get inside the vault to destroy it. So that's a condensed overview of the story. The whole thing with the movie, what it, what's kind of saying is that even though the biggest source of contention, the humans are gone, the apes, which have fought so long against them, are now divided, with many looking to gain power at other monkey tribes' expenses, which tragically emulates humans. And with humans seemingly looking to begin a resurgence, can apes and people once again coexist? Just a little something to think about if monkeys ever do gain sentience and completely eradicate us humans. Now what we like most about the kingdom of the planet of the apes are the visuals. As far as the CGI goes, I mean, this film is definitely up there. The characters genuinely look like real live monkeys. When you see humans and the monkeys together, it just works. I mean, they look like they're there. It's very impressive. We especially like the world around the characters. It takes place in a city that has been all but reconquered by nature, and you can just barely make out the hints of its previous civilization. Honestly, while we were watching the movie, our eyes were never really focused on the characters, but rather everything around them, because it was just so cool to take everything in. For us, it was kind of just the characters exploring this new world that really carried the movie. Everything's just so fun to look at, it's easy to immerse yourself in, and that's good for me. And the world, world building, was pretty cool, we really enjoyed learning more about it, we enjoyed uh, Raka's ramblings about the world that used to be and what's happened to it since. Although on that note, the characters are kind of eh. Noah is a classic case of a character who's lived in this closed off, isolated environment, but due to circumstances beyond his control, he's forced to adapt to a world in order to take on a task that's bigger than himself. Though so he's likable enough, you can emphasize with him, and that made following along in his journey worthwhile. Raka is this kind of mentor character acclimating Noah to this new world, and May is this untrustworthy ally who clearly has her own motives. And then you have have Noah's friends, you know, they're there, I guess. But then you have this guy in the movie, I think his name's Trevathan or something, he thinks that it's inevitable that the world's gonna get handed over to the apes, and he embraces that to get a higher position in ape society. But May disagrees with that viewpoint, and I guess there's supposed to be some conflict there between the characters, but it's not really played into and can be ultimately swept aside. We really wanted to like Proximus more, a lot more. He seems like he'd be a really cool villain, taking inspiration not just from Caesar, but from Caesar, from the literal Roman Empire. He's got this cult built around himself, he's building this army, he's conquering everything, but ultimately it doesn't really feel like they hyped him up enough. Maybe that's just because he doesn't show up until the movie's half over. Till that time he's kind of overshadowed by this other gorilla that, you know. It's just that when that final showdown comes up, when he and Noah throw hands, it, it was just kind of like, mm. What a wonderful- 
as a lot of people have said, the movie is quite long, and at 2 hours and 25 minutes, yeah, I can't blame them. For what it is, it has its moments, it has those points of excitement, but it definitely feels slow at a lot of points. Many times there's just not a lot of things going on, they probably could have shaved some time off, you know, made things a little more interesting at points, but it's not too much of a deal breaker. At the end of the day, the movie, it just isn't very memorable story-wise. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is obviously a precursor for what's to come. They make it clear that there's gonna be more movies on the way, so if those future films play it right, I think this one will age very well. I think this movie will be easier to appreciate when those future movies come out. As of now, there's just not a lot to say about it. Decently written heroes, underwhelming villains, and a so-so story. That being said, the visuals, again, carry much of the movie's weight, and because of that, for what it's worth, we did enjoy our time with the movie. If nothing else, just kind of for that novelty of exploration, discovering this new world. We're gonna to give this one a 6.5 out of 10. As far as recommendations go, despite a lukewarm score, we do find it quite easy to say, hey, this is a movie that you ought to go out and watch. Because even though it does kind of rely on that novelty of exploration and discovery and uncovering this world and whatnot, it's still a fun novelty. And there is at least a good time to be had watching this film. If it looks interesting, give it a watch. But that's our review of Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Now if you're new here, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. You just watched a video from the Genovision, baby. If you want to keep up to date with our game and movie reviews, subscribe to the channel, follow the Twitter, and join the Discord. Mac Cheese to Genovision, signing out. You all have a good one. We will